In this class, we are going to take the most recent UTME past question. That is 2023 questions. We are going to solve them and also look at why a particular option is the answer. We are looking at specifically module one. Module one. <coughs> now, the first question says, who is the current chairperson of ECOWAS? It's a direct question. Now, the current chairperson at the 63rd session of uh, Authority of Heads of State and uh, Government meeting that was held in July 2023, elected President Bola Ahmed Tinibu as the chairperson of ECOWAS. So the answer is option D. Bola Ahmed Tinibu is not any other person here. Is Bola Ahmed Tinibu that was elected as a chairperson of ECOWAS. That is option D. Now, this question says, the second question says, which document says as the constitution of the United Nations? <clears throat> that is the, the fundamental law establishing United Nations, establishing the membership rights and uh, duties of members of United Nations, the structure, the organs of United Nations. Now, let's look at the options. Now, this option is, option one has Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, Universal Declaration of Human Rights is the global proclamation of human rights to which everybody is entitled to which was adopted by United Nations General Assembly in December 19. So it's a document, there's a declaration by United Nations General Assembly. So it cannot serve as the constitution of United Nations because United Nations itself has been established before this. Now, option B is a Geneva Convention. Now, Geneva Convention is a treaty, a convention agreed upon in the late 1940s. Now, this uh, Geneva Convention actually is a conventional treaty that agrees on humanitarian considerations during war, humanitarian consideration as to the rights of civilians, how civilians should be treated during war, the rights of war prisoners the rights of the injured, how to also treat people who are sick during the war. So to give a humanitarian face during war, it was agreed upon by the world powers. So it is not a document. Even United Nations have been established before the Geneva Convention. Now let's look at C option C, the Treaty of Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. The Treaty of Non-Proliferation of nuclear weapon was a treaty agreed in 1968 by the, the states that have nuclear powers like United States of America, Russia, and um, some other states. Now, the objective of this treaty is it, to establish caution in the use of nuclear weapons and rather to use nuclear energy positively for things that will benefit the world and also to seek to the disarmament as much as possible. So it's about how to reduce the use of nuclear weapon and the possibly to end the use of nuclear weapon. So this has nothing to do with the establishment of United Nations. This is Charter of United Nations. Yes, United Nations was established by each charter that was signed in June 1945. So the Charter of the United Nations is the Constitution of United Nations. So D is the answer. Next question, number three. Which of the following African leaders played a significant role in the formation of NEPAD? Hey, we have Nelson Mandela. NEPAD was established in uh, 2000 and. Uh, one and the, the South African president that played a role in the formation of NEPAD 
was uh, Tabo Mbeki. He was the head of state. He was the president of South Africa as at that time. So he played a role, but it was not Nelson Mandela. Robert Mugabe, of course, was in power during the establishment of uh, Nepal, but he did not actually, not one of the founding fathers like uh, Obasanjo, the Senegalese president as at that time, uh, Butanflek of uh, uh, Egypt as at that time, was not part of it. Uh, Mama Gaddafi was not part, um, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania was also not part of um, it. Mama Gaddafi, of course, he was in power during that time, but he was not one of the founding members, founding fathers of the Nepal. The founding fathers were the um, president of South Africa, Tabo Mbeki or Lusego Abasanjo of Nigeria, the Egyptian president as at that time, Senegalese president. <coughs> So the option is not here. The Commonwealth of Nations was initially known as, is it a Imperial Commonwealth? It was never called Imperial Commonwealth. Rather, what preceded Commonwealth is what we call Imperial Conference. It was it started as part of the Imperial Conference, conference that was made up of the heads of government of British uh, independent countries as a League of Nations. League of Nations is the nations, is the organization that preceded the United Nations. That was the first world organization uh, that was established after the First World War. But because another world war broke out, the Second World War, this organization was replaced by United Nations. So it's not the answer. Commonwealth Rim reverse those countries that still acknowledge the Queen of England uh, or the British monarch as its head of state. The Commonwealth ring, you talk about a country like Canada, is a Commonwealth ring. Now, the former name in, was British Commonwealth. It was later changed to Commonwealth of Nations. What is the term for a system of government? That's number five question. What is the term for a system of government in which power is held by a small group of people? Now let's look at the option. Option A, theocracy. Theocracy is a form of government where religious power and uh, spiritual power, I mean religious power and political power as combined. Example, if you go to the pre-colonial Safulani system, the emir was the religious head and also the political head of the pre-colonial uh, Al-Safulani kingdom. If you go to a country like Iran, the, the leader, the supreme leader of Iran is the religious head and also the political head. So it is not theocracy. Option C, let's look at option C, monarchy. Monarchy is a form of government that is headed by a king or a queen or an emperor on which the ascend ascendance to the throne is through hereditary. So you are still seeing one person. So both theocracy and monarchy, is, we are talking about one person. Now, democracy is a form of government which supreme power vested on the people. So you are talking about the people here. Now, so it can be the answer. But look at option B. Oligarchy is a form of government where few people rule especially in their interest. So oligarchy is the answer. This a, a, a definition, the question is a definition of oligarchy. Question six, which of the following countries operate a direct democracy? Now some people can be tempted to look at direct election and begin to look at uh, a country like Russia where the president is popularly elected and uh, of course, that is direct election. Now, Switzerland, we can't talk about direct election, uh, democracy, because Switzerland still runs on representative basis. So it has a collegial government where five 
committee members represent the head of state and they appoint the chairman, the president, on a one-year term. Now, it is not United States, but rather, I mean, um, Switzerland, of course, it operates a collegial system, but Switzerland has a direct democracy. It has a demo direct democracy in the sense that the people, they elect their representatives and they still play a role in lawmaking. The people can question their elected representative on the laws they have made and call for a repeal of that law. The people can also, through a referendum, decide on matters that affect them or even decide on a law to be made. So it is only Switzerland that gives its people the opportunity to participate directly apart from voting in an election and have government that represent them after election they still have a forum through which citizens participate directly in governance especially in law making so it is switzerland that is the answer now which of the following was a significant trade commodity in the pre-colonial kingdom in benin now, in Benin Kingdom, uh, during the pre-colonial era, we are talking about the 15th century when the Nigeria had contact with the Portuguese. British had contact with Portuguese, I mean, uh, uh, Benin Kingdom had contact with the Portuguese during pre-colonial era and even the Dutch. As of that time, their most traded commodity, commodities were, number one, ivory then followed by pepe gold was also there but not very pronounced so if you look at the options the option has a good of course good was there but not very pronounced salt was not a commodity in benin rubber was not quite minimal it's mostly found in the western part of nigeria ogun Oshun state and the benin kingdom was known mainly for ivory that is a material that's made up of um, tusk or even the teeth of animals. So the Europeans actually came for these tusks. So ivory is the main commodity. Question 8 says, Dash was a major factor that contributed to the rise of Sokoto Caliphate. Now let's start from uh, Look at option A, European colonization. Now, European colonization came later after, Sokoto Caliphate came after 1804, after the war, the Jihad War that was led by Usman Danfodio that started from 1804, 1804, for 10 years till he conquered the Hausa Kingdom and its environs. So, uh, European colonization took place later on. Now, look at also and see slave trade. Slave trade actually did not give rise to Sokoto's caliphate. Of course, there was slavery then, but not, slavery was not so much in this northern part. We had agricultural revolution. Yes, they practiced feudalism, but that agricultural revolution was not, it's, it's not uh, quite pronounced in the northern part of Nigeria, in Sokoto Caliphate. It was the Islamic Jihad, that Jihad war that Usman Danfodio led in 1804, that lasted 14 years, that led to him to win and conquer the Hausa Kingdom and enthroned the Caliphate, the Emirate system, of which the Sokoto Caliphate was the most supreme. So it is Islamic Jihad, option B, that is the correct answer. Question number nine says, in a parliamentary system of government, the head of government is typically Dash. Uh, option A says, elected, remember the head of government is the prime minister. Now option A says, elected directly by the people. No. The Prime Minister is never elected by the people. Well, the people only represent, um, elect the parliamentarians, that is, members of the parliament. B, chosen by the head of state. This option is 
tempting, but it's not the correct answer. Chosen by the head of state connotes the fact that the head of state had option to decide whether to choose this person or this person. Yes, the head of state inaugurates the um, head of government, but he does not choose because he has no option. There is a person that he must, by, it is by law, that he must appoint that person. He must inaugurate that person. He does not choose. Now, C says appointed by the judiciary. No, the judiciary has no role in appointing the head of government. D says the leader of the majority party in the legislature. Yes, that is the correct answer. This is how a parliamentary system operates. We call it parliamentary or cabinet because of the rule of the parliament, because it's about the parliament. The parliament is what is being elected by the people. Now, when the parliament convenes and has inaugurated, the leader, there is a party that will have majority seat, that majority of members in that parliament. The leader of that party that has majority seat in the parliament is automatically inaugurated by the head of state to be the prime minister that is the head of government and that is why option d is the correct answer now this question says a key principle of the socialist system is the dash remember the socialist system is a system where a means of production, distribution, and exchange of goods and services are owned by the state. So it's opposite of capitalism, where we talk about private ownership of means of production. So let's say a key principle of socialist system of government is the dash A, private ownership or means of production. This is capitalism. So it's not the answer. B, minimal government intervention in the economy. Minimal government intervention in the economy can be found only in capitalist system where the means of production are owned by private individuals. C, equal of equal, let's look at D, power concentrate, concentrated in the hands of a few elite individuals. Uh, power concentrated in the hand of in the hands of a few elite individual it's rather titled towards capitalism we have few people control the means of production the few people get richer the majority get poorer it's titled towards capitalism because capitalism also brings about inequality but socialism aims to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor by enthroning an egalitarian society which grants equal opportunity and outcome to every citizen. That is why C, which says a key prince, um, equal of equality of opportunity and outcome is the answer. That is why the, option, the equation says a key principle of socialist system of government is the equality of opportunity and outcome. C is the answer. <clears throat> now let's look at this question. Which of the following documents granted Nigeria its independence? Now, the Lancaster House Agreement, London, has nothing to do with the independence of Nigeria. The United Nations Declaration on Decolonization. The United Nations never declared decolonization, even though the United Nations has anti-colonial posture, which, of course, the uh, United Nations has to its credit one of the reasons for decolonization of country, but it did not declare decolonization of country. The Atlantic, Treaty, Atlantic Charter is the foremost draft, is the charter which gave birth to United Nations. It's the charter that was developed to form the United Nations Charter. So it did not grant independence. It has nothing to do with Nigeria as a country. Then this is 
Nigerian Independence Act. Nigerian Independence Act is the independence is the act of independence constitution. So this is the act that actually granted us independence. So D is the answer, the Nigerian Independence Act. A major event in Nigerian history, in the question 12, a major event in Nigerian history that led to the suspension of Nigerian constitution and the declaration of state of emergency by colonial authorities in 1953 was the. Now, is it A, Abba Women Riots? Abba Women Riot took place in 1929, in the 20s. So it's not the option. Remember, we're talking about 1950s here. It's not the option. If we are talking about um, something that affected the first constitution, that is Clifford Constitution, we may. But of course, about women riot never affected that constitution. Zikist movement. Zikist movement has to do with uh, the fans and supporters, those that believe in ideology of Dr. Nandi, late Dr. Nandi Aziki, where they formed the Zikis movement to propagate and to pursue the ideas of Zik. It has nothing to do with this. Look at this, D, action group crisis. The action group crisis took place in 1962-1963. So it has nothing to do with this. It took place after what we are talking about. But look at Kano Riot. Kano Riot of 1953, which the background to it is the motion for safe government that was moved by Chief Antony Inahoro, which was not at that point accepted by the North and of, as a result defeated by the Northern representative in the House of Representatives when it was discussed. So, and as a result of that, the Northerners, we are you know, booed, treated by the Southerners who expressed disappointment towards them. In the course of trying to give orientation to the Northerners about the need for self-government in 1953, which was led by Action Group members, we saw the riot broke out in Kano. And that riot actually gave rise to the breakdown of the existing constitution. So the constitution we are talking about here is the 1951 MacPherson constitution. So it was, so when you say major event in Nigeria history that led to the suspension of Nigerian constitution and the declaration of state of emergency by the colonial authority in 19, it was the Kano riot of 1953. And the constitution affected is 1951 MacPherson Constitution and the Constitution that replaced it, 1954 Littleton Constitution. So C as the answer. Now, which African country successfully resisted European imperialism and maintained its independence? Um, is it Ghana? A option A, Ghana. Of course, Ghana was a British territory, a British colony. So, Great British gra granted its independence. B, Kenya. Kenya was also a British colony in East Africa. D, Algeria. Algeria was a French colony. Father, Utopia, in uh, around 18, uh, something, 1889, was able to resist and defeat the Italian invasion. They waged war against Italy that tried to conquer them and resisted it successfully and declared its independence. Later in um, 1940, in the 1940s, it maintained its independence because it of course has some Italians that mixed up with them. I wanted to seize power, it maintained its independence. So that is why in Africa, Ethiopia and uh, Liberia were countries that were not colonized. So Ethiopia C is the correct option. And the policy of indigenization was introduced under the regime of 
Now, that is, this indigenization was promulgated under the Nigeria Enterprise Promotion Decree of 1972. And who was the head of government, who was the head of state of Nigeria in 1972? The option is General Sani Abacha. General Sani Abacha was the head of state of Nigeria for 1993 to 1998. So he did not uh, introduce this uh, indigenization scheme. Is it General Orusego Obasanjo who ruled the country from 1976 after the death of Motla Mohammed to 1979 when he handed over to the civilian government? No. Rather, in 1977, Obasanjo altered that decree. Is it Ibrahim, General Ibrahim Babangeda that ruled the country from 1985? To 1993. No, it's not the option. The right answer is General Yakubu Gowon, who ruled Nigeria from 1966 to 1971 and to 1975. <coughs> Remember, we are talking about 1972. So he is the one, General Yakubu Gowon, that introduced that uh, Nigeria Enterprise Promotion Decree. Actually, and that indigenization decree was about participation of Nigeria in enterprises, for Nigerians to take over enterprises in Nigeria, and for even foreigners, foreign enterprises existing in Nigeria, foreign companies, foreign firms existing in Nigeria, to allow Nigerians to have a share in their company, and also to limit the participation of foreigners in some certain areas of the economy. So this scheme was actually introduced by General Yakubu, go on. Okay, this question, question 15 says, which political party was known for its ideology, was known for its socialist ideology and populist policies in the 1980s? <coughs> now let's look at the options. Option A, A says, Nigerian National Democratic Party. Now, when was Nigerian National Democratic Party formed? It was formed in 1923 as the first ever political party formed in Nigeria by Abbott, late Herbert Macaulay. Uh, so this one was formed in the 1920s. Actually, there was a later generation of Nigerian National Democratic Party that was formed as a breakaway, as a factional party, a breakaway party from Action Group the, by uh, Samuel Akintola, and that was in the early 60s, after the Ashon Group crisis of 1962-63. So that is Nigerian National Democratic Party, so it cannot be the option. We also have National Party of Nigeria. Yes, National Party of Nigeria is one of the sec um, second Republican political parties, one of the five Political part, five political parties that were registered in 1979 to, uh, to con in 1978 to contest 1979 election, but it is not the answer. <coughs> this one has capitalist ideology, even though there is some elements of welfareism. This is all Nigerian People's Party. All Nigerian People's Party is a fourth Republican party that was registered in 1998. So the People's Redemption Party was the party formed by Bala Musa. If you remember, Bala Musa is known for his socialist ideology and socialist turn. Right from the time he formed a breakaway party from Northern People's Congress and they created Northern Element Progressive Union, which was a socialist and people, especially the poor-oriented party. So when political parties were formed in the Second Republic, he created People's Redemption Party that was a breakaway party again. So, and the, the ideology of this party was specifically social democracy. So C is the answer. Now, a communist system, in a communist system, who owns and controls the means of production? Question number 16. Let's start from this D. Non-profit making organization, non-profit organizations. That's talking about NGOs. NGOs didn't control means of production, and of course NGOs. You are talking about profit making. NGOs didn't control means of production. 
Is it corporation? Let's say public corporation. They did not. Is it private individuals? We're not talking about capitalism. Communist system is in contrast with capitalist system. Capitalist system concentrates means of production in private hand. So we say that the state controls all the means of production. And the state does that through the government, which is the instrument of the state. Number 70 says, the arm of government responsible for budget approval and oversight is the dash. Now let's look at the option. A says executive. What does the executive do with respect to budget? The executive only um, prepares the budget and sends to the legislature. So their own is budget preparation. So exact, we are talking about approval and oversight. Oversight function is conducted on the executive. So executive is totally out of it. The judiciary do, has nothing to do with budget. They don't approve, they don't prepare, they don't approve. They don't carry out oversight function. Administrative is about the executive. It's administration is done by the executive. Rather, it's the legislature that approves the, an, the budget. When the executive prepares the budget, the executive sends it to the legislature for approval. Number 18 says, the civil service in Nigeria operates under the principle of what? This question tests your knowledge on the characteristics of the civil service. Now, let's look at it. So we have separation of powers. Of course, when we talk about separation of the powers, you're talking about arms of government here. So it has, it's not about the civil service. Option C says autonomy. Civil service is not an autonomous body. It is part of the executive arm of government. Uh, none of the above. Okay, let's look at B. B says meritocracy. Meritocracy is one of the features or characteristics of civil service because members are recruited based on merit and qualification. That is that meritocracy. So they operate on this base principle of meritocracy. Other features are anonymity, non-partisanship, bureaucracy, etc. The electoral system used in Nigeria is primarily based on DASH. A. Professional representatives. Where seats are allotted to um, parties in the parliament in proportion to the number of votes they got in an election. And remember, when you talk about proportional representation, it takes place under the context of a multi-member constituency, a constituency that elects more than one representative. Do we practice multi-member constituency in Nigeria? No. Do we practice proportional representative? No. So A is not answer. We have missed member proportional, of course, we don't practice it. It's not a popular concept in government. Look at this preferential voting system. Preferential D. Preferential voting system is a voting system where voters rank their candidate in order of their preference. So candidate C, A, that's first. I, I prefer you, number one. Candidate D. I prefer you as number two candidate. So we don't practice it in Nigeria. But what we practice is first past the post system. That is simple majority system. We are the candidate that has the highest number of vote cast is declared winner. In Nigeria, for example, we practice it. We don't look at majority. We don't look at you must have absolute majority. Because if you look at a 2023 election, the combined vote of P uh, Labour Party and PDP beats that of APC very well. But because we are not practicing absolute majority, 
um, APC had to win because they had the highest number of vote cast, which is simple majority, and another name for it is first past the post. That is option C. Question 26. If the president refuses to sign a bill within a specific period, it can become a law through what? So meaning, if president exercises his veto, that is refuses to sign a bill, which he has the power to, that is veto power, are there ways this bill can be called a law without his assent? Is it judicial review? No. Judiciary can rule that a law becomes a bill passed by the legislature becomes a law without presidential assent or the chief executive assent. No. Is it uh, C, public petition? A public petition can make a bill that is passed by the legislature to become a law and they vetoed by the executive. D, none of the above. But we have what we call legislative override. Like in Nigeria, the constitution states that if the executive, the president refuses to give assent, that is sign, refuses to sign a bill, after 30 days did not communicate to the legislature, the National Assembly, on why he cannot give assent to the bill. The legislature can, through a two-third majority vote, pass that bill to become a law without a presidential assent. And uh, this two-third, using two-third ma uh, um, majority vote to pass a bill without presidential assent is what we call legislative override. So B is the option. Now let's look at question number 21, which says, during the Cold War, Nigerian policy was characterized by what? Uh, if you remember during the Cold War, Cold War was a period of a non-violent conflict between the Western, led by the United States of America, a champion the capitalist ideology, for the world, and the Eastern, and led by the Russian, or USSR, the champion socialist ideology. Now, Cold War was that this group did not agree with each other, and even prepared for war. They entered into arms race, arms race, that is building sophisticated weapons of mass destruction, and even trying to upgrade in case of war. Now, some developing countries in 1961 came and formed a group not to take side with these two power blocks. And that is what we call non-alignment movement. Now, Nigeria is part, joined this non-alignment movement. So that is, look at this. So the question during the Cold War, Nigerian foreign policy was characterized by alignment with the Soviet Union, that is USSR and Eastern Europe, that is Wolf Saw Pact Group. No, Nigeria did not align. Alignment with the United States and Western Europe, that is the capitalist. No, Nigeria did not align with. Pursuit of colonial interests, Nigeria did not have any colony, let alone pursuit for colonial interests. Rather, D, neutrality and non alignment is what our foreign policy was characterized by not taking side with any of the power block in order to promote international peace and security. Question number 22. What is the main source of funding for public cooperation in Nigeria? The, source, the major source of revenue. Now, does it receive foreign aid? It does not depend on foreign aid. And foreign aid does not go to public cooperation. B, let's look at C, donations from private companies. Private companies won't donate to public cooperation. Public cooperation is an enterprise owned by the government to render essential services to the public at minimum rate. So private companies will not donate to it. Revenue generated from its operation, of course, people pay bills 
for their services but at minimal rate of which that bill may not be enough to actually if he wants to embark on a capital project or even needs establishment such revenue can do that so it depends on government budget allocation the government allocate budget so public corporations to run question number 23 which of the following is a right associated with citizenship that is a civic right only citizens can enjoy it now let's look at it from below option this says right to education is it only citizens that are entitled to education in a country in the country where you are non citizens are attending schools going to schools to in uh, the country so it's not right to education right to property is a personal right it's a fundamental right that everybody has right to privacy it's a fundamental right that everybody has whether citizen or non citizen but a right to vote is a franchise political right only citizens are given their right to choose their leaders by voting so right to vote is the only correct option now number 24 the current constitution of nigeria is based on the model of which country now as a chairman let's start from the list from d is it Germany? Germany practices a parliamentary system of government. Do we practice parliamentary? No. France. We didn't model, uh, even though France, yes, practices something like presidential, but we didn't model our constitution with that of the France. United Kingdom is a parliamentary system of government. That's monarchy. We don't practice monarchy in Nigeria. Neither do we practice parliamentary system. United Kingdom is also a unitary state. We practice federal, so it's not modeled towards um, United Kingdom. But rather, you talk about United States. Remember, from the Second Republic in 1979, we modeled our constitution um, with that of uh, United States of America, presidential, American style presidential system of government. That is what we adopted. And 1999 constitution, as amended, the current constitution we are using now, actually took most of its uh, provisions from the same 1979 constitution. So we are practicing American style presidential system of government, which is why we can see that our constitution is based on that of United States model. Remember, United States of America is also a federation. Nigeria is also a federation. So A is the answer. In a parliamentary, in question number 25, it says, in a parliamentary system of government, the executive branch is. Remember, a parliamentary system of government is a system of government in which the head of state is different from the head of government. And uh, there is clear separation of powers. There is no, rather, there is no clear separation of powers between the executive and legislature because members of the executive are also members of the legislature. So, looking at the question in a parliamentary system of government, the executive branch is separate from the legislative branch. No, that is in a presidential system. Uh, we have fusion of powers here in a parliamentary system. Let's look at B. Under the executive branch is under the control of the judiciary, you know. It's not under the control of the judiciary. C is combined with the legislative branch. D elected through popular votes. Members of the executive, this D are not elected. Even the head of government is not elected. Rather, he's the leader of the uh, party that has the majority seat in the parliament. But C combined with the legislative branch as because members of the executive are derived from the legislature and also maintain their membership of in the legislature 
That is why we say there is fusion of power. Members of the legislature are also members of the executive. So C is the correct option. Question number 26 says, in which system of government is the executive and legislature fused? We just discussed it now. But this time around, they changed the name. Now, look at option A, federal, federal system. Federal system is not talking about executive and legislature. It's talking about levels of government. The central government and the component unit, where powers are shared. So it's not talking about the arms of government. C, presidential. Presidential is where, uh, or B rather, uh, um, cabinet. This is where the legislature and the executive are fused because, as I previously explained, members of the legislature are also members of the executive. Remember, another name for cabinet system is parliamentary system of government. This, we are members of the executive, are also members of the legislature because legis uh, members of the legislature are the uh, executive are derived from the legislature. So it's B, option B. It's not unitary. Unitary has to do with concentration of powers uh, in the central uh, government. So it has nothing to do with it. So it's cabinet, which is also called a parliamentary system of government. Number 27, <laughs> which of the following is a function of uh, public complaint commission? Now, public complaint commission does not implement foreign policies. You, you talk about a uh, Ministry of External Affairs. They enforcing criminal laws. They are not enforcement agencies. They are not the police. So they don't enforce criminal law. D, managing public transportation. They are not Ministry of Transportation. C, conducting investigation and uh, inquiries. Of course, a public complaint commission is a body that receives complaints from citizens about abuse of office and also abuse of right by public officers, especially the public servants. So when they receive these complaints from the citizens, they conduct investigations and inquiries to ascertain what really happened. So it's part of what they do. So the answer is C. Question number 28. Which of the following is the basic unit of local government in Nigeria? Now, it's not local government development area. No, that's not it. It's not the state assembly. The state assembly, we are talking about the state government, which is higher than the law, is another level of government. We are talking about from where members of the local government councils are elected. Is it a ministry of local government? Ministry of local government is a ministry in the state government. Now, rather, the answer is ward. Remember, members of the local government uh, council represent wards. They are elected by their wards. So the basic unit of local government is ward. So in a local government, the basic unit of a state in Nigeria is local government. The basic unit of local government is ward. You talk about ward 1, ward 2 of this. So that's the basic unit of local government. Question 29 says, which of the following is a feature of Nigerian Federalism. One, strong central government. Yes, the central government is strong. Of course, it's not weak. B, autonomy of local government. C, single party system. We are not practicing single party system in Nigeria. D, centralized fiscal system. Now, actually, when it comes to revenue, remember there is what we call internally generated revenue. Each level of government, especially states and local government, can generate its own revenue. So it does not depend only on the centralized fiscal system, that is the central government for each revenue. They have their own internally generated revenue. So it's not as now we have a strong central government, quite all right. But one thing peculiar is the autonomy of the local government. Local government is regarded as the third tier 
of government, which of course it has the power to conduct some affairs on its own, which is devolution of powers. So it's the autonomy of local government. Question 30 says, the constitutional amendment process in Nigeria requires the approval of who amends the constitution? Who is in charge? Is it the president? The president does not. The president can rather send a bill, but he's not the one that will approve and pass that bill. The Supreme Court has nothing to do with constitutional amendment. It interprets the constitution when it's amended. D, the Independent National Electoral Commission. Of course, the Independent National Electoral Commission conducts the election. Rather, it's the National Assembly, which is legislature. The legislature, the National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, being the National Legislature, Nigerian Legislature, it is, is saddled with the responsibility of constitutional amendment. So, this B is the answer. Now, which is the founding member? Nigeria is a founding member of which regional organization? A. ECOWAS, B, OPEC, C, Non-Aligned Movement, D, IMF. I start from the D, IMF. IMF was formed in 1945 as uh, one of the specialized agencies of United Nations. So it's Nigeria, is not, Nigeria is not a founding member because we are talking about when Nigeria was still under colonial era. Is it Non-Alignment Movement? Non-Alignment Movement was formed in 1961, when Nigeria freshly gained its independence, of which Britain still has some influence on its foreign policy. And that was why even as at that time it was formed, Nigeria did not actually uh, unequivocally join the non-alignment movement. Is it OPEC? OPEC was formed in 1960. Nigeria joined it in 1971. So Nigeria cannot be designated as a founding member. Is it ECOWAS? Yes, Nigeria is a founding member of ECOWAS because ECOWAS was formed by the Lekosk Treaty in 1975 in Nigeria. So Nigeria, that is uh, headed by the head of state, um, General Yakub Gowan, was a founding member of ECOWAS. And that is why ECOWAS headquarters is in Nigeria. So A is the answer. Which of the following is a fundamental principle of democratic governance? That is, we are talking about a feature of democracy. Remember, democracy is a form of government in which the supreme power is vested in people and they exercise this power directly or indirectly through their elected representative and we see it as a government that is built on participation, full participation of citizens in the affairs of their state. Now, which of the following is a fundamental principle of democratic governance? One, authoritarianism, that is, you are talking about dictatorship, of course, it's in contrast with um, democracy. Centralized decision making, meaning that uh, citizens are not taking part. It's just coming from the central one uh, decision making body. Citizens don't take part. Of course, this is in contrast with democratic tenet. Censorship of the press, that is D. That is uh, limiting press freedom, which automatically limits freedom of expression. Of course, it cannot be the answer. Remember, we told you that democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. A government built on full citizen participation. So it's C that is the correct option. In a parliamentary system, number 33, in a parliamentary system, the head of government is usually the what? Now, A, is it the president? No, the president is usually the head of state. If you recall in Nigeria in 1963, but Tonan Dazikiwe was the head of state, the president. So he wasn't the head of government. That's why we call him, that, uh, that's why he was not a, an executive president. Is it the king or queen? 
remember in the uh, United Kingdom, you see parliamentary system. The king or queen is the head of state. Is it the chief justice? Uh, the, uh, is it the chief justice? No. Rather, the head of government is the prime minister. Remember in Nigeria, I use Nigeria as an instance, Aaj Tafa Belewa, as at independence, was the prime minister of Nigeria. First Republic, Dr. Nandas Kiwe was the president, the head of state, while Prime Minister Tafa Belewa was the head of government. So that is why C is the answer. Now, Nigeria share its longest border with West Af with which West African country? Now, the longest border Nigeria shares with a West African country is uh, at uh, 1,400 and something kilometers. And uh, the country that it shares this long border of 1,400 and something kilometers is Niger Republic. It's not Ghana, it's not Benin, it's not Chad. Okay, question 35 says, the process of selecting candidates to represent a political party in an election is known as uh, this question tests your knowledge on the uh, types of elections. And um, let's look at the options. Uh, Sean A says electioneering, which has to do with the processes of election. Uh, uh, Sean B says, C says campaigning, which has to do with uh, parties uh, and um, candidates trying to convince people to vote for them, lobbying, which is influencing members of the legislature to pass a bill or debate a bill in favor of a part, uh, the interest of a particular group or a person. Now, the answer is uh, primaries. Primaries are what we call primary elections. Uh, elections held within a political party to determine the flag bearer, that is the candidate of the party. So if uh, if candidates if election is coming up and the party A wants to bring out a president or candidate for president, of course, there are people, other people that will be interested. So these other people, we or they, there are people that will be interested. These people will go in for what we call primary election. From there, the person that will emerge will be called the candidate. Those that are contested are called aspirants. Now, question 36 says, which of the following is a limitation of pressure groups? Option A says they often resort to violent tactics. Now, if you look at it from this perspective, it may be tempting to choose this option when you um, remember a type of pressure group that we call a nomic pressure group. And this is a type of pressure group that comes out spontaneously. No particular leadership, no organization carry out objective which is usually violent in nature and disappears once the objective is achieved you don't see it again now but we can use because of it and say pressure group often maybe because even the anomic pressure group is rare the main pressure group is what we talk, call professional pressure group and the economic pressure group um, and other types of uh, pressure groups Labor, pressure, uh, labor unions and the rest of them. They use peaceful uh, means to achieve their aim. So it's not A. B says they only represent the interests of the wealthy. Remember, a pressure group is an organized interest group that seeks to influence government policies in the interests of their members. So not in the interest of the wealthy, but that of their members. So it's not B. Option C says they have no influence on government policies. If they don't have influence on government policies, why do they exist? <clears throat> Remember, their aim is to influence government policies in the interest of their members. And in most cases, they succeed in influencing. That is why they go on strike, they go on peaceful protests, and government will call them, and they will have a bargain, a negotiation with the government. In most cases, you see government shifting ground on its policies. <clears throat> so they have influence on government um, policies. 
Then this says they may prioritize their own interests over the public interest. Remember, this question tests your knowledge on the problems of pressure group. Of course, <clears throat> they can prioritize their own interests over public interest. Example, ASU goes on strike. Academic staff union or university goes on strike because maybe they want to increase in salary or better welfare for their workers, for their members. They go on strike, let's say, three months, four months. Students are not going to school. They lose one academic session. They won't graduate when they're supposed to graduate. Parents have children at home. Um, what do you call it? Social vices will be on the rise. People that make their living by, by selling in the university campuses will shut down, go hungry, and some of them can go back to social vices. So it's a problem to the public. But so long as they're pursuing their own interests, they may not consider these things. So they prioritize their interests over the interests of the public. So it's one of their major problems, one of the limitations. So that's why D is the correct option. Question 37 says, the National Assembly is composed of how many chambers? What is this National Assembly? National Assembly is the name of Nigerian legislature. If you go to United States, they call it the Congress. British Parliament. Other countries have their own. Nigeria calls its own National Assembly. If you look at National Assembly, National Assembly is divided into two. It's a bicameral legislature. So it has two chambers. The two chambers are the, um, the Senate and the House of Representatives. So it's, a, it's not a unicameral legislature. A can be the answer. D is not three, it's not four. So it's two chambers, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Which of the following is not a source of public opinion? Which of the following? Now, this question tests your knowledge on sources of public opinion. Now, remember, public opinion is the expressed view of majority of citizens on issue of public concern or government policies. Now, these issues, the expressed view, Something must make people to see things the way they see. That is source of public opinion, which, of course, mass media is there, family is there, school is there, pressure group is there, political party is there, civil society group, uh, groups are there, and many others. Now, it tests your knowledge. Now, social media is part of the mass media. It influences public opinion. It influences how you see your president. It influences how you see your, um, the president's policy. Is it academic journals? Of course, academic journals, what was the essence? Especially journals that has to do with, let's say, political science journal, public administration journal, journal has, that has to do with uh, public policies and public issues. Why are they writing? Their research is all about to influence the opinion of the public, to make people see things in a particular way. Political parties, of course, through their debates, through their campaigns, through their slogans, they make people to see and sympathize with them and give them support. Is it opinion polls? It's tempting. Opinion polls, we discuss opinion polls under measurement of public opinion, how to determine public opinion. Opinion polls is one of the tools that we use to ascertain public opinion. So it's not a source of public opinion. Rather, it is used to determine, to know what the opinion of the public is. Now, which, so the question 38B is the answer, opinion polls. Number 39, the Nigerian leader, which Nigerian leader advocated for the new partnership for African development? If you can recall the new partnership for African development of uh, OAU and now AU was actually created, which is uh, an economic uh, recovery and revampation program for Africa uh, to remove Africa from uh, this in, um, a part of poverty. It came into existence in 2021, in, I mean, in 2001. Now the question is, which head of state was there in 2001 in Nigeria? A, Sheu Shagari, 
was Nigeria head of state from 1979 to 1983. Yakubu go on, Nigeria military head of state, so it's not the option. Yakubu go on, 1966 to 1975 is not, not the option. We are talking about 2021. Muhammad Buhari. Muhammad Buhari. Okay, let's start the military leader. 1983 to 1985, it was not a time. A civilian head of state, 2015 to 2023, was not when this. We are talking about 2021. Rather, we are talking about General Lusego Abasanjo. He is one of the founding members of NEPAD. And uh, NEPAD 2021, Lusego Abasanjo ruled Nigeria from 1999 to 2007 automatically is the answer and of course in the history of uh, Nepal, Obasanjo is one of the founding members. Then the last question, question number 14. Pressure groups primarily aim to do what? Remember pressure group is an organized interest group Verse 6, to influence government policies in the interest of their members. So they aim to do what? They gain political power and control. That is the main aim of political party. Pressure groups is not interested in gaining political power and control. B, promote social equality and justice. And the aim is not primary. They may want to, but it's not primary. A promotional pressure group, may, but it's not their primary aim. Influence opinion, public opinion through media campaigns. Let's call it disrupt the functioning of the government. They don't aim to disrupt the functioning of government. Even though they want to influence government policy, they don't aim to influence the functioning of government. Of course, when they, their aim is to influence government opinion, a government uh, policies in the interest of their member and in doing that they try to influence the public opinion through media campaigns to make the public to see reason with them and give them support so it's one of their primary aims they want to influence the public also in order to actually gain sympathy from the government and use it against from the public and use it against the government so C is the answer so thank you for following me on this uh, revision section have a wonderful time i wish you the best in your ute me thank you